Coming up on two miles, one minute on my mark. Mark. Personnel report that you're ready to go. PEA. Go. AEA. HEA. Go. REA. Go. NTC. We're go. All right, we're in ALS. And we're in the press count. Engine start. We're in the press count. Call for South Fleet. Continue to monitor your system. And uh, the rest is in control. Personnel, it's going to be post hot fire, post hot fire or shutdown securing operations in page uh, 656. BTD, I need you to verify with the engine guy. Yeah, sorry about that. Standby. Yeah, the all personnel, that does take us to the last page there on page uh, 632. AR1, if you wouldn't step forward at 241, please verify course stage engine ones and four have uh, shut down for that step, and we have a safe engine shutdown. We are in post shutdown standby engines one through four. We just saw the core stage of SLS fire up. Of course, we also heard some uh, test conductor come in, so we want to go straight to Alex. Alex, can you please describe to us, first of all, what we saw and then what we heard? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, we had a very successful initiation of the engines. Um, you know, our, the beginning of our thrust profile there when we were firing for the first minute or so, um, you know, we obviously were getting some really good data coming through. Um, you know, but like we said earlier, you know, this, this is a test. You know, we have test commit criteria and we have certain boundaries that we have to keep all the oper all the operations under. So, you know, we really are trying to make sure that, you know, everything's operating properly and safely. So, you know, the test team was kind of seeing some data that they might not like. Um, and so obviously, you know, our engines were shut down ahead of the eight-minute scheduled time frame. But we do have a lot of good data to go look at. 
um, and hopefully, you know, we can move on from here and maybe get, you know, see what's going to go on further. So I was looking at your face when that started lighting up, and that was incredible. We saw the cloud forming. We both saw rainbows yeah. just forming right over our side. Just how did it feel in those first few seconds? Yeah, it's amazing. You know, it never really gets old, that feeling that you get, you know, in your chest or, you know, seeing, you know, just how powerful those rockets are when they're testing. So. Um, obviously, you know, it was an awesome thing to see, you know, and, uh, you know, I can't wait to get the core stage to Kennedy and uh, get ready for launch. And you told us, you know, over eight minutes we might have had tons and tons, terabytes worth of data, but we already have data just from right now. What are they going to do with that right away? Right, and so just like all of our other Green Run tests, you know, our, we have teams that are going to go and break down that data. Uh, and, and kind of see what we're seeing in our profiles, right? And so, I mean, that all goes into the, you know, the, the profile that we'll use for launch eventually at Kennedy. So, I mean, obviously there's a lot of things looking at the data. You know, we kind of talked about, you know, over the span of our green run testing, we have roughly 800 uh, terabytes of data, and that's a lot of data. You know, we're talking about, it's, it's, it's hard to grasp how much data that is. So, you know, the, we'll, we'll obviously take the time to dig through everything, um, and then obviously uh, have a path forward from there. And I know it happened really fast, but can you tell us what the people were talking about that we could hear from uh, the test conductor in that audio? Right. So after we did uh, engine initiation, you know, they're kind of going through and monitoring everything, right? So obviously, once we are actually firing the engines, we have to look at you know all of our um, engine re engine readings when that comes to temperatures, you know how they're reacting, how they're moving, and all that stuff. Um, we were just getting into our gimbal profiling test, which is you know moving the engines around. Um, right before we, we terminated the hot fire. So um, we're obviously going to have a lot of good data to look at. Great. Thank you, Alex. I'm so glad you're here. And so as the engineers gather data from today, we look ahead to the next steps. This core stage will be lifted out of the B2 test stand and refurbished to patch up that orange foam insulation. Then the team will load it onto our Pegasus barge, about as long as a football field, to make a six-day journey from the Gulf of Mexico to our Kennedy Space Center on Florida's Atlantic coast. There, it will be stacked in the iconic vehicle assembly building with other elements of the SLS rocket, including the twin solid rocket boosters, which our teams have already begun stacking on the mobile launcher. The core stage will join the boosters and then be stacked with the upper stage. And then the Orion spacecraft with the launch abort system on top. All of this work putting us on track to roll out to launch pad 39B for a liftoff later this year on Artemis 1. We are going to pause again and just talk about what we just experienced the stage was rattling that we're on here. We saw everybody with their phones out who's able to be here today. Um, talk us through from right when the engine started, what did we just see? Right, so you kind of, those last minute and a half, right, you're kind of hearing the test conductor talk about, you know, move to internal power. Um, I'll go for ALS startup, which is engine startup, right? And then at T-minus zero, you heard the final count where they're kind of pulling all the people who are really watching the critical components of the rock, you know, those critical readings we need right before we initiate engine start. Um, so after, you know, everyone kind of gave their go, we initiate engine start, obviously. Um, and that ALS, you kind of saw the pre-burners going on that rock. You kind of see some of the sparks flowing, right? And that's all part of the, part of the test. Uh, and then right before they start flowing, um, that fuel and that mixture, and then it ignites, and you see it at T minus zero. So that's kind of what we were seeing running up to the test. And then uh, after that, you obviously saw the plume and then the rest of the test as well. And we saw a few different angles. We were up really close to the engines. How are yeah. we able to see that? Well, obviously, we have, you know, the cameras and um, all of our views on the standard, you know, obviously well-engineered cameras, you know, very protective casings and all that. You know, it's all important that we not only get the data, but all the video and, and the view of what, of what exactly is going on. Great. Well, thank you again. We may still come back to you, but I want to remind everyone, it's not just Artemis 1. We've got several firsts on the horizon. This year, the first of our commercial lunar payload services, or CLIPS missions, begin with two companies delivering instruments to the lunar surface. The golf cart-sized Viper rover will search for water at the moon's south pole. A small CubeSat called Capstone will head to the moon scouting the orbit to be used on later human missions. And Artemis 1 launches on an uncrewed flight to test both SLS and Orion on a journey beyond the moon and back to Earth. 
Later on, we'll be launching the Power and Propulsion Element, or PPE, and the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, or HALO, to lunar orbit to become the first pieces of our lunar gateway, which will provide the jumping off point for lunar missions. Artemis II will be a 10-day crewed test flight where astronauts will set a new record for farthest distance traveled from Earth. And finally, Artemis III in 2024. The hardware for those next two Artemis missions is coming together right now at Mishu. The Boeing team is already demonstrating faster manufacturing times by implementing all the experiences and lessons from the building the first core stage. In Utah, Northrop Grumman is already building the booster segments for the next several missions as well. We've also got the Orion spacecraft for Artemis II down at Kennedy undergoing assembly. And the spacecraft for Artemis III is also being manufactured right now at Mishu in our hometown of New Orleans. So that wraps it up for us here today. After a major milestone, 